Welcome to another edition of Dodds and Ends. I am Amber Wilson, and joining me on the phone from New Orleans is CBSSports.com's college football writer, Dennis Dodd. Dennis, there's only one BCS bowl game left. What have we learned from the first four so far? Well, pretty much. I think that they were as bad a matchup as we thought. Aside from the Orange Bowl, it's you know these things have been uh, been pretty much blowouts, uh, and even now, I think the combined combined winning margin is something like 66 points in the four games. So. That's never good. Uh, not much drama. Um, I think the fact that uh, Kansas proved it belonged, not only belonged, but I think will be a top ten team going into next season. Um, they're just not very flashy. You know, they don't they do everything right. They're kind of like Virginia Tech thought it would be and has been these last 15, 20 years. But I, I think one of the biggest things that come out of this whole season, not, not necessarily the Bulls, is we're going to see some new powers on the horizon, some new – names in that top 25 every year. A couple of teams that always seem to be in the top 25 and always seem to get a BCS bowl berth, but then lose in the BCS bowl games, Oklahoma and Virginia Tech, they've both lost four straight BCS bowl games. Why is this, Dennis? Well, I think particularly Oklahoma is disturbing. They have, you know, th this is a, a trend now. It's been four in a row. I think in most of these they've had uh, players get in trouble, get suspended. Um, you know, they've had players get injured. You can't do anything about that. But they take more of a cavalier attitude for whatever reason. I think anybody would admit that at Oklahoma. They just come into these games treating them like exhibition games. Um, now, uh, obviously, when you're in a national championship game, that's a different story. But, you know, they've almost treated these games as if they're exhibition games, and they end up getting embarrassed because sooner or later you're going to run into a team that, that wants to play. And when you're Oklahoma and you've got that big OU on the side of your helmet, the other team's always going to want to beat you. So, you know, I, I think Virginia Tech's a little bit of a different story. Um, it's not a traditional power, or the, I would call it a, an annual top 15 team. Um, but a little different than Oklahoma. Oklahoma has some splaining to do, as they say. All right, let's talk about the big game coming up on Monday. What's the feeling down in New Orleans? Who's taking this one home? Well, this is a home game for LSU, Amber, and they are favored, and I think the people around here expect them to win. But the, the, the vibe coming out of the Ohio State camp is that, you know, we really mean it this time. After, after they were heavily favored last year in the, in the game in Glendale and just didn't show up against Florida. Um, you know, the, the thing I'm getting from players of Ohio State was that they weren't concentrating, weren't, weren't focused coming into that game. Well, you know, the, the physical thing I can deal with, the SEC speed versus the Big Ten brawn, but I got a real problem if you're not ready for, to play a national championship game. And if that's what's coming out of their camp, that's, that's disturbing. You know, why, why weren't you ready? So we'll find out. I mean, they, I think they're, it's a better matchup for Ohio State this year. Uh, Ohio State's a little bit more traditional on offense. But I think, I think the reason I, I favor them, I favor LSU, is that on defense, that defense that has been really banged up the second half has had a month to rest. And the fact that they're going to be playing against, you know, 50 or 60,000 Cajuns, I think, is a point that cannot be overlooked. It's going to be a huge advantage. All right, so LSU didn't end up having to replace its head coach, but UCLA did in Rick Neuheisel, who returns to his alma mater, and then Bill Stort re removes the interim from the beginning of his title at West Virginia. Yeah, I think the, the West Virginia thing is, is really the most puzzling hire of the off season. Um, really, for, by all accounts, it looks like a battlefield promotion. In other words, if Bill Stewart had not led West Virginia to victory over Oklahoma, he would not be their coach today. And that's a bad way to do things. You had the state, the governor of the state running things. Uh, in the post game. you had the president and the AD still taking shots at Rich Rodriguez. Um, and they end up hiring, I, you know, again, as everybody has stated, Bill Stewart's a fine man, a fine guy. I don't know if he's head coach material. He's not a coordinator. In fact, he hasn't been since 1999 when he's in the CFL. West Virginia just basically promoted its special teams coordinator and tight ends coach. Cause that's what was his title, along with the assistant head coach. So I really think they they went out on a limb for this one, and it, and it may cost them. Now, at UCLA, I, I have a completely different take. I, I thought that was the only guy they, they could have hired and should have hired, given that in the profession, you know, the, the profession of coaching, college coaching, doesn't have a very good reputation right now. And if you're going to hold – you know, Bobby Petrino is going to do what he did, and Nick Saban is going to do what he did, and all these other coaches. Well, what's wrong with Rick Neuheisel? He's an alum. He's a winner. Uh, it's been five years since the betting pool scandal at, um, at Washington, and he's built his reputation back up by going to the NFL and becoming successful there. He's contrite. I say why not. I think it's a great hire for UCLA. 
All right, so both of those teams have new outlooks for 2008, Dennis, but it's never too early to start talking about next year. Who do you see as contending? Well, I think it's the usual suspects. Uh, even though uh, Oklahoma lost, I, I was ready to pick Oklahoma preseason number one. I'm not so sure now. I think Oklahoma is, is a top five candidate. Certainly Georgia has a real chance now to be the preseason number one. Florida is going to be in there. The Florida-Georgia game, by the way, next year is going to be a uh, I think going to be a windfall for StubHub, no, nobody else. People are going to want to get into that game, because that's going to decide a lot of things in the SEC and nationally. And Ohio State, uh, who has everyone back, uh, despite what happens on Monday. And USC, I think we saw a hint of what they could do. We all know what they've done these past six years. They're going to have to break in a new quarterback. But I actually think they're going to get better with uh, with Mitch Mustaine or, or Mark Sanchez at quarterback. So. Not not many new teams breaking through. I, w- I would say if you want to go deeper than that, you got to put pick Missouri and Kansas in the top ten as well. All right, Dennis, don't have too much fun down there in New Orleans. That'll do it for Dennis Dodson. And I'm Amber Wilson.